Hello and welcome back to the channel. You have joined me for our season finale of the medical breakdown of The Last of Us. This is episode nine entitled Look for the Light. And just off the bat, thank you so much for all your support on this series. What would you like me to cover next? Leave a comment down below. And also a big thank you to Incogni who are sponsoring this video. More on them later. As with all these videos, it's gonna contain some spoilers and some pretty gory scenes. If you think you can manage that, let's check it out. Blimey. We see Ellie's origin story and it's a bit of a marker of things to come in her life. Her mum gets infected whilst in labour, which is the explanation to Ellie's immunity. And this basically just creates so many more questions than actual answers. And it's certainly realistic that mums can pass on infections to babies in the womb, you know, viral infections, bacterial infections. I, I'm guessing fungal infections too. And also during birth, so they can actually get infected via the birth canal, the most uh, devastating one being something like group B strep. Sexually transmitted disease as well, like gonorrhea and uh, herpes can also be given to the baby as it comes out of the birth canal. But one of the key things to figure out here is what has actually been transferred from the mum to Ellie. And that could either be through blood via the placenta or via the birth canal. So let's assume that she gets the actual fungus transferred to her and in which case, yeah, baby's immune system are slightly different to ours, but I still think, you know, realistically, she would just get the infection and turn into a zombie baby. Is, is that something anyone wants to see? It's within the realms of possibility that the baby's immune system is different enough to therefore create a different kind of reaction. I mean, babies don't have any adaptive immune response yet. They've got no learnt immune response. They just have innate immunity. So I think this is more likely the route they're going for, that there's something about Ellie's immune system getting exposed very early on in a very naive, immature immune system. So the interaction between the fungus and the immune system is very different and that has created the immunity that Ellie has. Or maybe I'm just getting way too into this and they just wanted to make an extremely dramatic and moving scene here. And we can see the hope here that Ellie's mum has for, for cute little Ellie, sort of fresh out the oven. And in terms of realism, Cutting that cord, I didn't even think about it not being real. It looked, to me, pretty bang on. It's a word game. <laughs> if you want to beat me at something, it would be this. Well, all right. Then. This is oh, so difficult to watch. She is obviously really suffering with her mental health. Uh, massively affected by the last episode, what she had to go through. We talked about how her being forced to kill that man in that brutal encounter will affect her. But not only that, the whole build up to that where she probably lost hope, thinking Joel was dead, being trapped in a prison, the assault, the sexual assault. She got physical injuries as well. And it's one of those things where it doesn't hit you at the time and now when she's in a place of relative safety with Joel, it's all coming back. She's got very low mood, low affect. She seems hopeless and helpless and just not herself. Yeah, I, I think it's very realistic. <laughs> okay, that is a really nice moment with Ellie feeding the giraffe. There's lots of evidence to say that animals help reduce stress and anxiety and help with mental health. I think the studies are mainly in dogs, but hey, therapy giraffes, <laughs> bring them in. I, we can see they're working. Maybe there's nothing bad out there, but so far there's always been something bad out there. <laughs> Well said, Joel. There's been always something bad out there. It's quite literally the understatement of the show. And you know what's also bad? Data brokers having your information. That's why we're gonna talk about today's sponsor, 
incogni. Every year there are more and bigger data breaches of your personal information. Web services and apps that you use often sell your data such as your name, age, address and shopping habits to data brokers to be used to market to you. There are thousands of these data brokers and if they sell your data inappropriately may lead to you receiving nuisance or scam phone calls and emails. And worse than that, if any of this data is leaked, it puts you at risk of identity theft such as waking up one day to find someone's taken a loan out in your name. Luckily, there are laws in the US and Europe that allow you to get this data removed. Unfortunately, to contact all these data brokers would be extremely time consuming as there are thousands of them. The system is basically stacked against you. But if you're in the US or Europe, you can sign up to Incogni to do all the legwork for you. It helps take your personal data off the market by reaching out to these data brokers on your behalf and requesting your personal data be removed and deals with their objections. And best of all, it's all completely automated. You can even track the progress of how many data brokers your records have been removed from. So if you want an easy way to stop your data being used in this way, you can sign up to Incogni using the link below. The first 100 people to use the code Dr. Hope will get 60% off. And a big thank you to Incogni for sponsoring this video. Sarah died. And I couldn't see the point anymore. Simple as that. So Joel finally opens up to Ellie about his attempt to take his own life after the death of Sarah, his daughter, and you know, the, uh, I guess the background of the world falling apart as well, that's not gonna help. As emergency doctors, we see people coming in who have suicidal ideation. We see multiple people every day and hearing their stories you can see how they get in that headspace the the stuff that some people have going on in their lives is just you know absolutely unbelievable but the thing is we also see people that have come in through other things that have been through these horrible things so we know it's possible to come out the other end so it's just about you know getting people through that cheesy as it sounds that's the way to do it there is always hope and you know joel here has found hope in in looking after ellie hasn't he? he's found a new purpose and that can never take away from the hurt you know he had uh, of losing his daughter that will always be with him people are making apocalypse jokes like there's no tomorrow too soon no it's topical <laughs> oh i love this one <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And we see the benefit of people sharing, people talking about their feelings. All those scars are, are not gonna heal, but they're moving along in, in that journey. Ellie's having a bit more hope, feeling a bit brighter. That's a three out of 10. Five, seven, minutes. I'll give it a five, five out of 10. Five. Okay, well, I spoke too soon there. Looks like that's some kind of stun grenade. I'm no expert <laughs> on stun grenades, but we can hear the ringing. So there's obviously been a concussive force akin to what we call a primary blast injury. So a big change in air pressure that has caused damage to the eardrum and, and a ringing in the ears. He thinks that the cordyceps in Ellie has grown with her since birth. Why is she in surgery? It produces a kind of chemical messenger. It makes normal cordyceps think that she's cordyceps. It's why she's immune. What? I <laughs> I did not expect that. Let me get my head around this. So she's been infected with cordyceps that produces a chemical which stops her being infected by cordyceps. It's like inception cordyceps. It's basically been growing with her and not necessarily causing her symptoms, kind of like a symbiotic relationship. I'm guessing it's kind of like venom in the Spider-Man franchise. I think I'm getting this now. So the interaction between Ellie's immune system and the fungus has changed the fungus in some way. As we said, like a symbiotic thing, but it's actually also getting the fungus to express new proteins, new chemicals that is suppressing the fungus itself. So there's a general release of these chemicals happening. And then when cordyceps tries to infect again, these chemicals suppress you know, also susceptible to this chemical, and therefore it it never fully takes over. It just sits there as a, you know, as a 
she's a carrier of it. Or indeed, it's not necessarily something intrinsic to Ellie, it was the way she was exposed. So she got exposed very early on when her immune system was learning, meaning it reacted different to the fungus, the fungus then react different to it, and it created this symbiotic relationship within her. And you know what? I don't hate this. <laughs> I don't hate this solution because this is science fiction, okay? At some point, you have to put some fiction in there, otherwise, you know, you, you're just gonna be doing a documentary on stuff that exists. To create this whole world, you have to have a couple of leaps, and as long as then, after those leaps, you then have some good science behind it to, you know, add to the realism, which they've absolutely done throughout the whole show, then you have to you have to suspend belief at some point along the process and ignore people like me <laughs> who pick it apart. And although I say this is pretty mad, it's not outside the realms of possibility either. Like never say never in medicine. You can always find weird stuff that happens. He's gonna remove it from her, multiply the cells in a lab, produce those chemical messengers, and then we can give it to everyone. Right, my word. My brain is getting, is on overdrive. I think this kind of checks out. If we assume everything they've said up to this point, then this is, to me, there's some logic in this. They're gonna extract the fungus, then kind of grow it in a lab to produce the chemical and then inject it. What they've created here is definitely not a vaccine, so not really the ideal treatment. They've created a therapeutic, and I'm guessing it would have a very narrow window of being worth it. You know, if you give it to someone too early before they're infected, their body, like any toxin or chemical, would just get rid of it. They'd break it down in the liver and excrete it via the kidney. So it wouldn't give them any protection. If you give it to them too late, the fungus would have just grown, given them multiple organ failure, and we've seen it coming out of every part of the body. So you wanna give it to people that are in that window where they've been exposed, but haven't actually developed symptoms yet. That would be the ideal. The way. I think they're hoping this is gonna work, although there's no guarantee, is that if you do get exposed and you know you don't get the symptoms and you get this therapeutic in time, it suppresses that initial infection, but also means they're exposed to cordyceps so their immune system can then recognize it. So actually, it does give them immunity going forward. I think that's, that's really what we wanna hope for, but if that isn't the case, you're gonna need to have this chemical every time you get an infection. And again, don't hate this as a concept within this universe. Cordyceps grows inside the brain. Right, okay. So that's a bit of a leap. I think where we're going with this is that Ellie's gonna die from having cordyceps removed from her brain, which kind of makes no sense, you'd think they would try and find parts of the fungus within her bloodstream or maybe biopsy her lymph nodes or maybe even biopsy part of her brain. There's no reason why we need to remove the whole fungus. We just need a few cells, right? Rather than her saying we need to take out the whole of the cordyceps <laughs> and Joel said it's in the brain and then us piecing together, Ellie's gonna have a whole brain taken out. <laughs> What would have worked better for me would be the woman to say we've done some kind of imaging and the cordyceps in Ellie exists within, you know, deep in the brain stem, so within in a critical part of our brain and that the biopsy would likely kill her. Or you might think, well, what about the chemical? Can't they isolate the chemical from the blood? I'm pretty sure they could, but then they couldn't produce the chemical. So this explanation helps us not only answer the fact that we need the actual fungal cells and also puts Ellie in a bit of peril for our finale. I keep walking. I said keep walking. Where is she? F*** you. I don't have time for this. Well, we saw Joel enter beast mode in the last episode. So I don't know what that makes this. Is it, what's, what's the next level of beast mode? We see multiple gunshot wounds, so high velocity penetrating traumas, causing traumatic brain injuries, chest trauma, abdominal trauma, even a kneecap too. Yeah, Joel, he mad.
Unhook her. How did you get in here? I said unhook her. Okay, so it looks like they've just induced Ellie, so they've given her some anesthetic drugs to make her unconscious. Yeah, it looks like a pretty standard uh, operating theatre here, obviously stripped down because of the, uh, the issue sourcing this stuff in a zombie apocalypse, so I hear. It does look a little bit dark, though. The one thing that always strikes me about an operating theatre is how blooming bright it is. Okay, they've got the surgical lights here, but they, I think they need to change the bulbs in them. Turn around. This is kind of a bad idea to move someone that's under anesthesia. Because you might be so sedated that you block your own airway, so you get into a funny position, or the tone in the muscles is so relaxed, such as the tongue, and it sits back and stops you from breathing. So you need someone airway trained to be able to monitor you and look out for that to do some airway maneuvers or even use an adjunct. And similarly, you could be so sedated that your respiratory rate drops as well. So you might need someone to temporarily use a bag valve mask to ventilate you while the medication wears off. So actually here, I would probably take one of these uh, medical professionals hostage. Never, <laughs> never thought I'd say that, but they would be able to keep Ellie safe, but I'm guessing they might jeopardize his plan in getting her out. Because she lives in a broken world that you could have saved. Maybe, but it isn't for you to decide. Or you. So what would she decide, huh? Because I think she'd want to do what's right. I think she's right. Given what we know about Ellie, she would want to sacrifice herself for the potential cure of this illness. I think we'd like to think we'd all want to do that. The issue is there's been no resemblance of informed consent here. They've just kind of tricked her. Turns out there's a whole lot more like you. People that are immune. Dozens of them. The doctors, they couldn't make any of it work. They've actually stopped. They've stopped looking for a cure. I can't believe Joel. Joel probably convinced himself that he's protecting Ellie, but actually, we know that he's doing it because he loves her and he doesn't want to lose her, he doesn't want to lose another daughter because he knows Ellie would want to sacrifice herself for the potential cure and he doesn't want to feel that loss again. So they have it, the last episode of season one and what a roller coaster! Not just this episode, but the whole season has been absolutely brilliant. I've loved all the medical touches and breaking them down. And thank you to you as well for all your comments. They've informed so much of these videos. And learning little things like Ellie's mum here was played by the person that voiced Ellie in the game. And similarly, the person that played the henchman that was killed by Ellie in the last episode actually voices Joel in the game. So it's really nice they're bringing people that are involved in the video game into this series as well. And so leading on, if there's anything else I've missed, any theories you've had or what you thought about the show in general, then please leave a comment down below. And if you've enjoyed my series, then please consider subscribing and giving this video a like. And I'd love to know what you would like me to break down next. Obviously, I'm going to do Last of Us Season 2 when it comes out. But in the meantime, any other shows you want me to check out, leave a comment down below. And thank you to Incogni for sponsoring this video. And finally, thank you to you for all the support on the channel. I hope you're all well, and I'll be back soon. Yeah.